Welcome to Urban Access Entertainment right here on UBC TV. This is Tim Moss from Artists Exposed with Tim Moss. And we are at the Serene Sargent Theater at the, and this is what, the American Theater for Actors in Midtown Manhattan. Got it all. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and I am here with the production staff, I guess of uh, The Green Room. September. It will be opening in September of this year at the Off-Broadway House. So I'm going to step out of the frame and I'm going to talk to everyone that you see here. So let us start with the music and lyrics. You wrote the music and lyrics. Chuck Pelletier, how are you doing? Very good. Thanks, uh -huh. Tim. Yes. And we're at the fundraiser for, for yeah. this. Yes. Uh -huh. And we just heard one of the songs from there. It's all about me. Yeah. This yes. is the big kickoff fundraiser and uh, our producer, Stephen Miller, uh, was kind enough to uh, put on one of the tracks from the show, mm -hmm. It's All About Me, uh, which is the song that uh, our big diva sings in Act yes. 2 about how she can never get cast in a role. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, now one of the writers is here, Stephen Foster. How are you doing, buddy? I'm great. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> Thank you for coming out for us today. Now, you wrote this with... I wrote this with uh, Rod Damer, he co-wrote the book, and uh -huh. Chuck Pelletier, of course, who wrote the music and lyrics, uh -huh. and uh, it's sort of an experience of all of our college life and uh, what we went through in college and the backstage story of the dramatic life that happens in the green room in the theater department. Uh -huh. And I think it's such a great blend of that, of the storytelling along with the music. Yeah, I agree. And one of Chuck's main missions in this musical was to sort of have it be an old-fashioned musical. So we have a musical within a musical. We have them uh, rehearsing for stuff. We have them um, actually doing a part of a play that they're in, the professor's um, terrible show called God Songs. So, you know, it's all about the theater, theater experience, the good, the bad, uh -huh. the ugly, and the relationships that are formed. And at this production of The Green Room, I'm going to move over to this side now. <laughs> at the center of The Green Room now is, also in the center of the row, is the director, the fabulous Jessica Jennings. How are you? I'm good, thank you. <laughs> well, so uh, how are you feeling now that you've seen this, uh, the fundraiser has been kicked off? Yeah, I'm feeling jazzed, of course. Uh -huh. I'm really excited to be asked to be here by Stephen <laughs> Miller. Um, I fell in love. I mean, the funny thing is, so I, I was listening to the music, I was watching it on YouTube, and I the first thing I told them was I couldn't stop smiling. Right. When I was watching it and listening to it, it uh -huh. just it, it left me with so much joy. And I'm just thrilled to be asked to be here and, and part of a story that means so much to all theater people. But yeah, I'm just really excited for the whole process. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. And what a process it is, as will the final one here on the front row, <laughs> Mr. Stephen Miller, the producer of the show. So you're the one that basically puts it all together in a way. It, yes, absolutely. It's a, a long process, uh -huh. but I've been uh, working with uh, the writing, you know, the writers and trying to bring this together you know over the past year mm -hmm. and here we are today at our first fundraiser and you know the show's happening and we open in September yes you know yes. it's a process but it's worth it so how were you happy with the turnout here I thought it was wonderful I'm very happy with the turnout and the support that we're being shown for you know new work uh -huh. you know being brought to the off-broadway stage and who knows what future this show could have, and we know it has a future. Absolutely. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Especially when you've got a theatrical piece about theater. Absolutely. <laughs> that is so true. In it's, New York City. In New York City. <laughs> but it's, it's a show that everybody can understand you know whether you're in the theater industry or not or mm -hmm. you know somebody you've all had your type you know your clicks in mm -hmm. high school and college yeah and this just shows that aspect of it and uh -huh. I find it fascinating because you know we're all theater people right. but uh, we all have had that experience in one form or another and it's amazing uh -huh. to see it come together as a, a musical and yep. the music is phenomenal yeah so, and absolutely. fun and funny and uh -huh. heartwarming at times but the most important message that I can give from this show is one of the songs tells you in the end you do what you have to do but in the end you do what you love and absolutely. that is a message that needs to get out to the world yes. so come hear that song if uh, it well 
see all the songs, but <laughs> that song means a lot to me. Uh-huh. And that was one of the songs that drew me to the show. Yes, absolutely. Well, more for my aerobic exercise here. <laughs> Back down to this end. Jane so Fonda let's start. <laughs> Jane Fonda has nothing on you. <laughs> so Chuck, um, firstly, welcome to New York. This is like a whirlwind trip for you and Stephen, because you live in Los Angeles, correct? Right, in Hollywood, yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, you came out, uh, was it today? You arrived today? No, 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 last night. Last night. Yep. And you leave in the morning. Tomorrow morning. <laughs> well, that's dedication. That is dedication. So let's start. Let's talk about the process real quick. So when, now you wrote the, the music and the lyrics. How, do you have a specific process or, uh, uh, that you follow um, when approaching a, a project like this, like where you have a story and you know what you want to tell, how do you match the music and the lyrics with that part of the storytelling? Does that, do you understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. I uh-huh. think it's really got to do with the character. You just drop... Most of the writers I know, the good writers that I know, uh, talk about this uh, thing that happens to all of us where we... Um, it's sort of schizophrenic. We sort of drop into the character that you're writing for uh, to the point that you can't really write, if it's a duet, you can't really write both sides at the same time. Uh-huh. Like it's a different day. It's, 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 it's yeah. that, like, con- it sounds esoteric, but it's quite concrete. You really just start to think like that character thinks, and then you uh-huh. sort of write the things that that character writes. So me, I write lyrics and music at the same time. They come to me simultaneously. Uh-huh. Um, and in fact, our music director, David, uh, referred to me today as a, as a songwriter, and I love that, because uh-huh. songwriters, uh, generally in the musical theater world, we use the term music, the, the, the music writer, and the, yeah, the uh-huh. composer, or the lyricist. Uh, yet, some of our best, some of my favorite writers uh, have been people that write the music and the lyrics at the same time. Mm-hmm. Lionel Bart, Meredith Wilson, uh, Frank Lesser, uh, many of my favorites uh, just happen to be people that kind of come up with something at the same time. Uh, and I've written musics, uh, I'm, I've written music and I've written lyrics, um, but this show, all the songs came to me um, all at once, but as wow. a part of the character. Interesting, that's amazing. So you kind of saw all of that or felt all of it as you were writing. Where? Yes, I mean, I think if you define characters very clearly, uh, then the characters tell you what to say. Uh-huh. So now the story, the story itself. So you, there's four characters in the show. Can you tell us a little bit about what they go through? Well, yes, there are four characters, sort of archetypes. There's uh, John, who's the jock. There's uh, Anna, who's the princess. There's Devon, who's the diva. And there is Cliff, who is the nerd writer. And um, it's the story revolves around, I would say, Cliff, because at the end of the play, he says, well, maybe I'll write a play about this play sometime and call it The Green Room. Now, it's not a, a flashback piece in any way, but that, that character and that moment defines how The Green Room became about. It, became, it was a, a story on Rod's life in the green room when he went to college Mm -hmm. and then what happened is Chuck and I came along and we put our two cents worth and I said you know like when he had written the song it's all about me I said that was me in college the song was not written about me but I said that song that was me I played a corpse in college in drag in a a coffin and damn it they would never cast me in a lead to save my life so you know so the whole thing about the green room became Chuck's story, my story, Uh Rod's story, and stories of people that we had known, and as all writers do, you beg, borrow, steal, Uh you put it in the script, and you find out what works, and so that's the arc of the characters are based on all of our lives and fiction and things that we needed for the story. Uh-huh. Yeah. Now, for people who are not that familiar with theater or acting, a green room is the room that the actors wait in kind of off stage, um, where they kind of gather to, before they go on stage. That's correct. correct. And in this play, 
um, as when Rod went to school, what these characters have done is they sort of have made the green room their own personal like rehearsal space, place yeah. where they do the homework, where they make out, where they fight. Yeah. So it's sort of their personal lounge. Yeah. So yeah. we were able to convey all the characters' journey because it all takes place in one setting. Yeah. And so all of these characters and all of their interactions are sort of, it's like um, the play noise is off. It all happens off stage. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And that gives, so you're not focused on, on anything except what's happening in that particular room. Right. Right. And just like you said, I mean, a lot of actors, particularly, I know myself included, the green room almost becomes your home. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what it's like in theater. So yeah, much of, of what happens in theater happens off stage. Mm -hmm. You're only on stage for two hours, uh -huh. but you're in rehearsal. Yes. <laughs> and you're in tech and you're in in whatever you're in for the majority of the time that you are um, in the theater process. Absolutely. And that's what, that, that's what I think is so fun about our pieces. We show them in rehearsal. We show them, you know, you know we have a scene where the two lovers, Anna and John, are practicing a, a piece from Tartuffe, Molaire's Tartuffe. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and John's using it to get an angle on her. And yeah. she's like, no, I just want to concentrate on the scene. And that's great drama. Yeah. But it all, but it's all in the auspices of theater mm -hmm. and that's what we love yeah. about it absolutely absolutely well for my next aerobic exercise here <laughs> anna it. one you anna two it. anna one anna no, two <laughs> <laughs> so jessica jennings director now so we have a script that is written and we have music now comes the part of casting it and kind of seeing it and imagine using your imagination to see how it plays off on stage so yeah. how, how, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> take it away. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So how did you, how did you, what is your process for that? Oh, okay. Well, I mean, obviously we have auditions upcoming. Mm -hmm. um, so part of that, even just before the auditions, is just notifying our entire community because, uh -huh. um, you know, I've been on all sides of this business. I've mm -hmm. been an actor. I've been a producer. I've been, you know, <laughs> fundraising. Mm -hmm. Um so I get that shows are often cast before the audition starts. Mm -hmm. And the reason is from the production end, it's like there's so much at stake. Mm -hmm. you, good people know good people. You want to work right. with people that, you know, not just blow you out of, of, you know, blow you out of the house from the moment they open their mouth with an amazing audition. But you, you want to know the quality of what that actor is mm -hmm. bringing. Um, so that's why, you know, you pull upon your entire past, all your relationships, uh, the people that you love and trust with their, mm -hmm. their work ethic. And yeah. You want those people to show up at the audition, Absolutely. you know? Yeah. And if it's between someone you know and someone you don't know, you're probably going to go with the person you know. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that's just part of the business of it. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, a part of that is the letting everybody know that the auditions are coming up and yeah. get their stuff together because, you know, we would love to work with you. Now, I mean, every show that I've done takes on its own uh, language, its own process. Mm -hmm. It sort of depends, you know, what it, what the show calls for, what it needs. Um, with this one, I mean, we've had some conference calls and uh, I... I I did watch some of the show and watch some of the footage from it, uh, but I'm never one to like study it and recreate. Like I'm not right. trying to do a cookie cutter thing. Uh -huh. um, I really love to draw on the influences of each actor. Like what are they going to bring to the role? Yeah. You know, I'm almost like, okay, if you want to look look at the clips once just so you get an idea what the show is and then forget about it like I don't want you to recreate somebody else's performance make it yours right. um, we talked about other ways that that can happen like you know updating a lyric to match mm -hmm. this day and age you know uh, this is very specific time and yeah. there is some political commentary we worked into the show so yeah. we want to make sure it's it's fresh and updated and yeah I mean I'm, I'm a very collaborative kind of director up uh -huh. until a point right. but that is a really important process right. and you really want to make sure everybody's bringing up their um, artistic instincts and right. creating that character fresh. Absolutely. Yeah and again when it when it comes to the casting I mean you have to know 
from the script. You have to be very familiar with the characters themselves, and you kind of go in having a rough idea or having an idea of what you're looking for as far as what what an actor brings to the casting process. Oh, definitely. Um, and actually, something that's very important, especially for the New York scene, we talked about this show has been done across the country in the Midwest, or, mm-hmm. you know, um, it's it takes place in the Midwest. It's for white, usually done by four white actors. Mm-hmm. Um, and we talked about, and I, I think it's very important, you know, the audience in New York will want to respond to a diverse cast, mm-hmm. um, even acknowledging that it takes place in the Midwest. So yeah, right. w- we're in an exploration of, of how to do that and, you know, mm-hmm. where the limitations are depending on, you know, how the, all the characters. I don't want to give away too much because yeah. we don't know how, we ultimately don't know uh-huh. exactly how it's going to be cast. We know one character, you know, has a limitation on how it can be cast and, uh-huh. um, now, um, one one aspect of this particular show is it's all takes place in one. The set is one, which is is the green room. So that's yeah, that's easy. So no like blackouts and change of set or anything like that. But the challenge would be to stage it so that it is interesting for the audience to watch as well. Correct. Uh, yeah, and I come from a dance background, oh, dance and choreography. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I so grew there will up. Be movement. Oh, absolutely. I grew up incubated <laughs> in theater, um, but spent a lot of my professional training in the dance world. Uh-huh. Um, I'm very comfortable moving people on stage. I insist on it a lot of the times. Like, even if I'm given a scene where two people are sitting in a cafe, I will make a reason that somebody has to get up and walk around. You know, that's that's really very important because uh-huh. there's you know you just don't want to <laughs> anyway you don't want anybody to fall yes, asleep absolutely. <laughs> but this show is very dynamic and kind of you know there's that's not hard to do I don't have to do anything <laughs> overly creative it's just there it's like uh-huh. I you know acknowledging you know how people act uh, on a couch or in a in a room they're really comfortable with because the yep. green home is an extension of home for them yes, you know absolutely. and when you're home I mean and you're in college I mean you just don't necessarily sit on a couch in a traditional way you might be launching yourself over the back or sitting sitting on it in a weird way or doing some exercise and you're inverting yourself. So all of those concepts will be yes, utilized. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to see what you do with this. <laughs> okay, so Chuck Pelletier wrote the music. Stephen Foster and Dame, Rod Damer um, wrote the, the script. We've got the director. Now, Stephen Miller. How do you produce something like this? <laughs> Taking the concept and finding the theme. I mean, all of that's a, such a huge process. And go. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it is a, a team effort. And having a great team makes a show possible. But mm-hmm. it starts from the bottom up. And the bottom is raising the funds. Mm-hmm. You know, that's our least favorite part of it. But uh, we do need to raise the money to make it you know, officially off Broadway and equity, you know, will be under an equity code, uh, but we're casting non equity and mm-hmm. equity, which is phenomenal. Um, but it's having the writers and then my creative team, you know, my stage managers, my director, my musical director, mm-hmm. and, and we're basically one big happy family, but it is all of us coming together and making it possible because, yes, my job is a lot of paperwork, but. There's so much more to it, emotionally, physically, to making a show possible. And it starts with a good team yeah. and being yeah. able to make it possible. Uh-huh. But, I mean, there are, there are aspects as far as finding a theater yes. and then filling the theater. <laughs> then, you know, getting word out about the show. And, um, I mean, that it, it's, it's such a, it, it is such a, a large process as far as I'm concerned on the, well, on every side, but from the production side. Because basically what you're doing is you're taking a concept out of the air and, well, it's on paper. <laughs> but putting it, yes, right, yeah. <laughs> You're a step ahead of the game there. But, um, and, and putting it on stage. Yes. Uh-huh. No, absolutely. You know, it's taking a concept and turning it into a masterpiece. But mm-hmm. it, it takes, you know, the process, like you said, of get, finding a theater that, you know, will fit it. Uh, mm-hmm. And, you know, talking with equity and getting the contracts yeah. that you need to make it off Broadway mm-hmm. and of course publicity is a very big thing and it's probably one of the most expensive aspects because you want to get your work out there and seen and on yep. billboards and you know in newspapers and interviews yep. and all of the you know all of the aspects that you want to do but 
you know, there's there's many aspects that do go into it, yep, such as absolutely. specifically publicity being the big one. Yeah. But there's there's other aspects that go into it, but it's a process. Absolutely. Start at the bottom and work to the top. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So, uh, speaking of publicity, give us all the details. Oh, publicity <laughs> is so much fun. Well, I, I mean, as far as like the name of the show and when oh, it's opening. Yes, and yes. Uh, it, it will be playing at the Serene Sergeant Theater, opening September 25th for a five-week run, which is super exciting. It'll be playing Wednesday through Sunday uh, and Wednesday through Saturday at 8 p.m. And we're thinking, or we're planning, uh, 2 p.m. on Saturday and 3 p.m. on Sunday. So uh -huh. tickets will be on sale later this, you know, later this spring around uh -huh. audition time. So uh -huh. you'll want to get your tickets as soon as possible because it's a hit and it's it's going to sell out. Absolutely. Absolutely. So keep an eye out for the green room and I will have all this, all the information as well. Well, let me run back down here. <laughs> Huffing and puffing. <laughs> okay. So Stephen, again, thank you everyone for, for um, taking a few minutes out, out, of the day today because I know you're all very busy and but one thing just my biggest word of advice to all of you throughout this process because it can get stressful it can get harebrained it can be pulling in this direction and that direction do not ever forget to have fun yes. that's the whole point of this is enjoy the hell out of it <laughs> so Stephen do you have any parting words as far as like the green room and the music or I'm uh, Stephen. Stephen yeah what I would say, the parting word is, we are going to have a great time, and New York is going to love this show. Yes. They've been waiting for it, and now it's ready for them. Absolutely, because New York is such a theater town anyway. Yes. They're really going to eat this up. Yep. So, Chuck, with the music, what do you have to say about the green room? Well, I just uh, hope people love the songs, and it hope it uh, touches people's heart and, uh, and brings the message that uh, Stephen Miller mentioned, that uh, in the end, do what you have to do. Yes, absolutely. Back down here. <laughs> okay, Jessica Jennings, director. So, um, what are your parting words now for uh, for the green room and undertaking this? Well, it's, my job's just beginning. So <laughs> I don't know. Gear up because it's gonna be it's gonna be an exciting ride. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And Stephen Stephen Miller, producer. What do you have to say? Please, you know, check out the show. Whether or not you've been in theater or not, or possibly know people in theater, it's worth seeing because there are so many different messages in this show that that are very important to life mm -hmm. in general. Mm -hmm. And like I had said, you know, and in, in the end, you do what you have to do. But in the end, you do what you love. And I can promise you that our team is doing that. And so are you, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, let me just make one last quick run back up here in the second row. And my thanks again. Uh, this is the production staff for The Green Room, which will be opening this fall in September. My thanks to composer or songwriter. Yeah. How about that? Mm -hmm. Songwriter Chuck Pelletier. My buddy Stephen Foster. Yay. The writer. And uh, the director, Jessica Jennings. And producer, Stephen Miller. Thank you very, very much. We appreciate it. Right here on UBC-TV.